Everybody, and um, thank you very much for attending what is the really the first um, working day for many of us um, back in the new year. Um, when Jim first said to me that um, and broached it that the thought is that I might go naked in front of Green Monday delegates, I was very, very concerned. However, he told me that this was nothing to do with um, my physical appearance, which is bad enough. Um, dressed as I am in a wonderful m and suit, um, but um, I really didn't want to go any further than that. Anyway, I'm delighted to be here to give you a little bit of background into um, our thinking behind the, um, the Plan A and the question really which um, I was asked to talk about, which is the, um, the value of a, um, of a sustainability program from a CFO's perspective. I think if we look at the... Um, the question is, why is it important? And for us, um, as finance people, I do think, um, and maybe presaging a little bit of the discussion of the panel, the finance people here, my guess is, have got a, um, an element of self-selection in terms of their views. That's why they're here. Um, and therefore, I'm not sure that everybody in finance um, is represented today. But I certainly think that there's a lot more that we in finance can and should be doing overall as to the um, the... Um, sustainability agenda and how, and how we can push that forward. So why is it important for us as a business? Well, as um, Jim says, as CFOs and as Doug said, as CFOs we're um, really seen often as the guardians of the business. We may be the ones who are more resistant to change. Equally, the ones who generally risk seems to fall into our particular domain in terms of either tracking or measuring or, or controlling and helping the organization to assess risk and deal with it appropriately. So when we look at the agenda that we're all dealing with, our operational costs seem inexorably to be on the rise. Resources that we're facing are increasingly constrained. Supply chains are things which we see more and more disruption through weather patterns, through um, factors which seem beyond our control and which seem difficult to, for us to address. And then, as we've seen very, very publicly and very recently, reputational issues become key business issues. We've seen that in, Zara, um, in Starbucks, we've seen that in Greenpeace, we've seen it in some of the retail sectors and their affiliations with, um, with some of the energy companies, um, and we've seen it with Zara and Levi's in, in the clothing world. So reputation and how we are viewed by customers is increasingly part of the, um, of the um, environment in which we're operating. And I think that's true very clearly and obviously for consumer-facing businesses such as M&S, but it's equally true for business-to-business -business businesses, which I think traditionally have tended to think of themselves as divorced from this. But ultimately, even a business-to-business -business business ultimately has consumers as customers, even if it's a customer of one of their business partners. So I think this agenda is not going to disappear either. And there are risks and financial risks which are significant to us. So from a CFO perspective, I think sustainability is, is, is very critical. However, as well as managing the risks, um, we do have the opportunity um, to, cr to take advantage of some of these, um, these, these risks and opportunities. And that's something which within M&S um, we have addressed very, very clearly. Um, I think um, it's clear that um, having been at M&S for a little over two years, it's not something that I can wholly take um, or really take any responsibility for, but it's certainly formed part of the employment um, and pre-employment discussions as regards my joining M&S as to the, from my perspective, how, um, how much is environment important to the company, but equally from M&S's perspective, how much does the sustainability agenda actually fit with, with me. Um, five years ago, actually six years ago in January 2007, we launched Plan A, and we launched it um, not really knowing what, we, um, what the impact would be. We launched it onto a world which was um, in many, many ways skeptical, when, um, as I was at the time at WH Smith. We looked at it and we thought, what is, what is um, M&S up to? They've launched this, um, this um, advertising campaign. Is it just a marketing gimmick? Is it something which they um, are, are serious about? Why are they starting to charge for, um, for carrier bags um, from a customer perspective? Customers will never wear that. Um, and all of those questions were ones which I don't think M&S, if we're honest with ourselves, really knew what the answer was at the time that we launched it. But we did it um, because we felt it was the right thing to do. And the plan A element, which I'm sure many of you are aware, is because there is no plan B. And this is something we believe as a company we have to do, and it's something which we believe we can use our our, our um, brand and our strength and our position 
particularly in the UK, but increasingly internationally, to um, tell our consumers and tell our customers and to use our influence um, to make people perhaps question some of the, um, the agenda items and the issues we're grappling with more clearly. And if we can get that questioning and, and um, um, on the table, then we can actually make progress on the environmental and sustainability agenda. But we can get value from it as well. So we had a strategic plan. We're very clear about that. Um, we set it up within the organization. It touches every part of our business, and it, um, and it is impacted in every part of the business. The, every level is involved. Our people are involved. We try to make it a customer involvement. We can, can talk about that as well. And out of it, we've seen very, very clear benefits. Some of these that we've seen are, are direct cost savings um, within the finance agenda and the CFA agenda. Cost and pressure on costs and reduction of cost is always an important um, part of the role. So we've saved energy, we've cut waste, we've reduced our fuel use, we've reduced paper, and we've um, used these as relatively small examples, but over the whole organization, they've added up to a lot of, a lot of benefit. There are small things which are important, um, but which actually touch everybody in the organization. So the use of napkins and cups in head office, three and a half thousand people are impacted, and daily their impact in terms of their usage of, 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 of cups and napkins. We recycle everything in the office. We have, no, we, have no, we have no waste in the office. Everything gets sorted. We have a policy of no waste paper bins in offices. We're encouraging everybody just to get up there. It actually has an extra benefit is that you have to get up from your desk to throw something away. So you're getting some, some exercise at the same time. Um, in terms of the existing business, we also have continued to support our existing business. So this wasn't about changing the business. It's about how do we do business within what we're doing. So we differentiate ourselves in terms of fair trade coffee and tea. 100% of our, of our product in, in tea and coffee is fair trade, and that's something we're very proud of. Um, we have food free from artificial colors and artificial flavors. We are very uh, much at the leading position of healthy eating and the signposting of healthy eating. We're the largest retail, reseller in the UK of fair trade cotton. And we've also, and this is again an initiative which when, when we stepped back and evaluated where we were um, about this time last year, we felt we're five years in, we've done an awful lot, but a lot of it is focused on the NGO and the sustainability agenda side. Our customers are actually the ones we want to talk to. We have 21 million customers visiting our stores a week in the UK, and we felt that we wanted to engage more more directly with them in a way which um, spoke to them emotionally as much as on the scientific and the NGO type level. So we launched an initiative called Shopping. We make our customers aware of the, um, how much um, clothing goes to landfill every year, and we've encouraged them every time they buy an item to swap one of their, or to swap one of their um, existing items and to bring it into the store. Now, we've, it's less than a year old, um, it's something that we're making progress on. There's a lot more we can do. We've um, invented a new wor word. We're very happy if other people talk about shopping. We don't want to have ownership of this. We want people actually to think about every time I buy an item of clothing, actually I should be recycling something from my wardrobe because if the cost of getting that product into manufacture, it's much, much greater for a new product than it is for recycling. And we can get um, a lot of benefit as an organization from it. Another example um, is innovation. We focus very strongly on innovation within um, what we're doing within Plan A. And again, to use the shopping example, we're buying back fibers from the, the um, clothing and the fabrics that have been um, shopped. Um, these are all dealt with through Oxam, so we leverage our, um, our um, engagements and our partnerships with other people um, within, within the overall community. And we've turned these, these fibers into new products. We recently were selling a women's cashmere coat for 89 pounds made entirely from recycled fabrics. We have a suit which is made um, um, all from recycled materials, recycled um, wool which is then respun, recycled buttons made from recycled. And these items are either, in the case of the suit, on a comparable price with existing product or in the case of the cashmere garment I told you about, significantly cheaper. Than the, than the original um, item. So there's a benefit from the consumer and there's a benefit from us from a business perspective in terms of um, what we get from that. Plan A has also given us new revenue streams. When we started looking at um, our commitments and our, and, and our um, objectives as regards energy management, 
we looked at the, the use of energy, and we thought, well, hold on, here's something which we're very um, clear, clearly and keenly focused on. Our customers have that opportunity, and when we started looking at um, energy as a cost to us as a business, it then turned into a revenue opportunity for us as a business. And we launched it four years ago. We're now the seventh largest um, energy um, provider in the UK. Now, we're not a creator of energy, of, um, energy but we use our, our position in the market with our customers to sell our, our customers M&S energy. Um, we encourage them to um, adopt um, solar heating, we encourage them to adopt um, insulation, and we encourage them to think about their energy usage. And we'll go more in that direction as well. And there are other ways in which we will look to use our, our knowledge and our position to help our customers live lives which are um, healthier and, from their perspective, more sustainable. The other benefits which we've seen are very much more difficult to put a value on and to monetize. So they're about the staff motivation, about the resilience of the organization, about our supply chain, and about the, um, the way that we build stores. So Cheshire Oaks um, is our newest very large store. We opened um, towards the um, third quarter last year in September. It's the second largest store in the whole of our state. Trades from 150,000 square feet. And really, because of the Plan A agenda, it is a state-of-the-art, um, sustainable store, but one which gets um, tremendous feedback from customers. It's, I don't have time this evening to go into all of the, um, the factors that we've taken into account in that and what we've put into that store, but they're all driven from a sustainable um, agenda and from an environmental agenda, and the customer feedback on them is absolutely tremendous in terms of the ventilation, in terms of the wood, in terms of the architecture, and in terms of the overall presence and, um, and in store. And this shows by working with, um, again, our business partners, whether it's the contractors, the local authorities, um, the way our, 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 our own suppliers, we're able to get very good business benefits from something which is clearly starting out as a sustainability initiative as well. So all of those work together to build the brand from an M&S perspective. Um, we started out um, thinking that this would cost us. And we thought it would cost us, and we were prepared to invest £40 million per annum in this particular initiative over the five years. So we expected it would cost us, um, and we were prepared to have it cost us an overall um, £200 million over the, over the period. The reason we thought it would cost us and we were prepared to do that is because, as I say, there is no plan B, and we wanted very clearly to focus not only ourselves as an organization, but equally um, our investors and our shareholders um, on the fact that this is something which we felt we should be investing in. What we discovered once we started measuring this, and this is where um, we've worked very closely um, with the finance function ourselves internally and also we've had it assured by Ernst & Young um, on an external perspective such that we're able to publish numbers which have gone through assurance on every um, objective that we set ourselves that, and whenever we publish a financial number or a target that we've, and our progress against it, we've got that external um, metric and trust which um, third-party assurance brings to it. But what we found that is that by year two, we actually weren't spending... £40 million, pounds, the net benefit we had in that year was cost neutral. And by year three, four, and five, as you can see here on, on the slide, we had a, um, a benefit of £50 million, £70 million, and most recent published um, at the end of the five-year period, £105 million benefits. The implications of this organizationally have been very, very significant because by talking about the numbers, by talking about the financial benefits, and by making them all part of the, of the, the organizational um, benefit measured with finance, because finance have been the part of the organization which really has been responsible for tracking these numbers and working with the businesses to ensure that what we're um, reporting on is accurate. Um, what we found is that from finance perspective, there's a tremendous um, inbuilt to the finance function commitment to the whole of Plan A. Some of the other things we do organizationally is, the, um, is that we do give um, every member of staff the chance to have one day off a year to go and work for um, a charity or a sustainability or, or an external agenda which um, we fund through giving them the time off but which they um, can choose to do of their own initiative. 
And the, the finance community, I'm really proud to say, is one which has led the whole of the company at, um, in terms of the way in which they've got behind this, the way in which they're putting, um, organizing themselves to support business initiatives. So um, the Forever Fish Initiative or the Clean Beach Initiative, which we've, which we've used publicly to try to raise awareness of issues around fishing and, and beaches, um, is ones where the finance community as a whole have, have, have had days out in the office. To, um, to go and support it. So we've had very strong learnings and, and benefits within the finance community. Equally, finance people do want to measure, they do want to add up that um, 3 and 33 and whatever the other number is, 64, add up to 100. Um, they're the ones who really do want to measure um, clearly on it. Um, and overall, the business benefits we get from this um, business case which we're measuring are ones which actually we haven't been able to put a value on, but which is very, very strong from a business perspective. What we have done is to try to um, summarize our learnings, and um, I have here a hard copy. It's available on, the, on our web. Um, if you're interested, please go and read it. And what we thought is that we, what we should do, and I think here Jonathan has been very clear, clear and helpful in making sure that we do use our expertise, um, is that we publish our thinking and publish what we believe are some of the learnings from that. So this white paper is um, available on the m and corporate website. Um, but really just to give, um, and, and this is my final slide because I'm conscious of time, is to give um, the highlight of some of our learnings which, we, which we've seen from this, um, from a finance perspective of this five years of Plan A. I think the first thing is that measuring the business case is extremely important. When you start measuring, you start thinking about things and you start then actually working through what further benefits. And there's a natural competitiveness in terms of, well, we've done this this year, how much more can we go next year? So the fact and the, and the essence of measuring it supports the, not only the organizational benefit, but actually supports the argument that sustainability is good for our business. I think the element of finance measuring it helps give that credibility. The external assurance gives, the, 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 gives another layer of credibility, but finance gives it credibility. Finance people are objective. They're used to being objective, and they're the best place to do it because they're in our structure very firmly embedded within all of the parts of the business, and they're business partners as, well, as much as being a financial um, um, function. Looking at things through this green lens, which um, Plan A forces us to do, helps identify new opportunities. So we had a zero waste to landfill target across the whole of our business. That's any aspect of business, whether it was a new store, whether it was an existing um, supply of, um, of, of food, whether it was just an activity in head office. Our target was zero waste to landfill. And in order to, and we didn't know how we would achieve this when we set out. But when we started saying, well, what is it we need to achieve here? First of all, we had to measure what we needed to achieve. And then that gave us the ability, by breaking it down into component parts, to know how we could start addressing this target. And once we had an understanding of, wh of what it was we were measuring and what we needed to measure, we could then go after the, um, the goal itself, which, which was to have zero waste to landfill. And in this exercise, Again, we found that it was either process or it was um, material which we were aiming at, and both of those lead to costs. And going after reducing the costs or the process, um, the materials or the process, actually gave us organizational benefit, which is significant. The benefits which we came from the Plan A targets also flowed into the business. So the innovation, the new business of energy, which I mentioned, closing the loop on our, on our waste, um, Plastic waste, a key element which we saw, is that we um, have the, um, we thought we were generating a lot of plastic waste. What do we do with this? Well, now we make our, paper ba our plastic bags from our own um, plastic waste and we use it into food packaging. So it's a closed loop system which is very beneficial. It helped drive better cross business working. We had a target of 25% fuel efficiency which our logistics and retail teams, which traditionally would have been quite separate, had to come together to work on. And over our whole supply chain, where we have 2,000 suppliers, we've got 20,000 farms, we've got 2 million workers, all of these impacts are flowing through into our supply chain. And this is an overall benefit which we continue to work with, which will reduce not only our costs, but their costs and therefore our input costs. 
So I think if we then step back at the final learning that, that I've got and we've got from this, which is in the booklet, is that not everything can be monetized. We were asked the question by Doug, can we put a value on it? And we can't monetize everything. But a lot of the value is, um, is there, even though we can't put a monetary value on it, and it's a significant benefit to us. I think from a finance perspective, um, the one area which we haven't fully addressed, and as a quoted company, I think it's imperative that we do, is how do we make sustainability part of the mainstream language of our investors? And that's where some of the discussion might go, but it's a key part of, um, of the narrative moving forward. Um, in my experience, it's too easy for us to say our investors never ask about it. Our job should be to make them talk about it. But from a finance perspective, the value is that we will have a company which not only is addressing a sustainability agenda, which is very clear and very focused and very pertinent, but actually we have a company which is sustainable from a long-term perspective. Thank you very much for your time.